Good morning. It is a good day. Wow, the Lord has put something on my heart for you all. You know, it's the same thing I do every day. Um, what I tell you about is what I've been doing. And what I've been doing is reading the Word of God and being violent. What do you mean being violent? Is that a Christian way to think? <laughs> yeah, it is. Because the violent take it by force. Amen. Some things you've got to take by force. Right? So, amen. Good morning, daughter. Caressa. And the word of God says in Matthew eleven twelve, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence take it by force. Sometimes when you're believing for someone to be healed or a child to be, to be healed of a certain disease that other people are saying that, that it's impossible and the doctors are saying, you know what you have to do? You have to do exactly that. You have to speak the word of God and get violent. The word of God says that my son, my daughter is healed in the name of my body is well in Jesus' name. I command you cancer to leave. That's the violence that I'm talking about. I'm talking about violence, the storming heaven with and, and agreeing what heaven says about your situation, about what the word of God says about your situation. Heaven to me is Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says in Mark 11, Matthew eleven twelve, and you need to stay on this scripture today because there's going to be some challenges throughout the day. And you know what? You have to wake up in the morning, sometimes violently. <laughs> right? And go and take care of yourself. Get ready. Go to work, right? And then get to work. And there, there it is. All the troubles in front of you. Do you say, oh, well, maybe I will just, well, I'll just ignore that. You better not. Some of you are nuclear power plant operators. <laughs> Sometimes you got to run and turn that valve or you're going to have a meltdown. That's the same way you need <clears throat> to turn the valve from your, in your mind and say that no sickness, I might see you. The doctor says that I'm sick and, and everyone else around is saying that I wish and I hope and uh, prayers are with you. No, you need to stand on the word of God and say, I'm going through this. Amen. I am going through this and the word says I am healed. You're crazy. No, I think you're crazy. That's the voice that you'll hear. He says, you're crazy. Yeah? Okay, I think you're crazy. The violent take it by force. Amen? And the violent, they, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. I'm not talking about fist fighting yet. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about taking a gun and shooting it. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the word of God, standing on the word of God until, hey, what is it going to do for you? What is it What is going to happen if you stand on the word of God until the point where I can't breathe? Then call the ambulance. <laughs> You know, there's times where I believed God and and uh and these times I believed God all the way to the hospital. <laughs> and I had a word of knowledge for them. I need five milligrams of morphine, I need a bed, I need to rest, and I need and I also need some antibiotics. And they said to me, Are you a doctor? Because I had viral pneumonia in my first year in Bible college. But I wasn't giving up. I, you know, even Jesus came at the point where I was like, oh man, no one knows I'm in the hospital. I have five children. I got two of them I'm still taking care of. And wow, I have a, a wonderful wife. I know she'll help me to a point, but she needs me too. And people around me need me. And Jesus came and says, you want to go to heaven? You want to come home with me? Or do you want to be home? And I was like, he just said that. Do you want to come home? And I was like, no. So I had this envision, and and I and he says, well, and I got this IV in my arm, okay, first year in Bible college, <laughs> Karis Bible College, Andrew speaking, <laughs> everyone else, thank goodness, I 
Thank God that he brought me there. I needed help. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just need a jump start. Amen. You need someone to pray for you. And that's exactly what happened. He said, Jesus said to me, then I want you to get up and sign yourself out of the hospital. And I was like, okay. And you have to take it by force. I was 155 pounds, green and yellow, and spit in the same color. Woo! And I needed to get back to school, the Bible college, because I needed to learn some more. And the, the doctor, the pharmacia, he that's the only thing he knows is to work in that medical industry. The only thing he knows is that you need to take some more drugs, more tests, and be a pincushion, and those drugs will make you more sick and more. And some of them, I mean, uh, the antibiotic was good at the time for me. It helped me to stay alive. My my organs were shutting down. Amen. I, You know, I believed, and I fought this. All the way for weeks and until until my wife went to bed and I stayed up and I couldn't even lay down. I was in the living room. I believe God. And I said, body, you listen up. Oh, oh, oh. And I couldn't breathe. And I said, honey, I need to go to the hospital. And she woke up. It's the middle of the night. I'm, I'm sitting up. Have you ever had those middle of night experiences? Well, make sure you make the phone call. Make sure you keep people. And he, and I, I was taken to the hospital. Each bump hurt me. I was septic. Amen. Woo. But Jesus said, take, get up out of your bed, sign yourself out and go home. I said, okay, I will make sure it's Jesus. Amen. <laughs> make sure. I called up my wife. I said, honey, I'm signing myself out. I made sure when I was in that hospital bed that no one else was allowed in the room. Nobody but the Holy Spirit and the Bible. Because I've seen what unbelief does. I've seen when other people say, oh, I wish. And they, you see it on Facebook. I wish that. And, and, my, and I send energy towards you. I don't need no energy. And I don't need no wish. All I need is the word of God and the violent take it by force. Amen. They storm heaven and take it by force. Amen. They take that word of God and they take it by force. And nothing else is going to speak to them. Unbelief. Either the left side, the right side, the, the husband, the wife. You Sometimes you just got to be arrogant towards that, towards that what you hear. And that unbelief you hear, you get arrogant towards it and say, no, that's not what the word of God says. The word of God says, I am healed. I am whole. I am set free. I already spoke to this mountain and I speak right now that I am because the violent take it by force. Amen. So I told the doctor, I'm signing myself out. You know what he said to me? In a kind voice. No, it wasn't a kind voice. You know what he said to me in this demonic look? You're going to die. And I said, that's a spirit if I ever seen one. I said, no, I'm going to live and not die. And I'm leaving and I'm signing myself out. Thank you, doctor. But no, thank you. And I, man, I couldn't even, I walked to the wheelchair. I made it to my wheelchair. The violent take it by force. Ah, my body was aching me. I couldn't even breathe. I was spitting out gumbies. If you ever know what a gumby is, it's whatever. I won't discuss that. It it was it was phlegm. I was suffocating. Amen. <laughs> so I got up and I got into the wheelchair. First year in Bible college. I had to get back to the word of God and my brethren. That was the only safe place. I mean, I've got all the unbelief out. So now I'm home. And then uh, my, my wife, she's loving and caring. She goes, you got to get a doctor's note before you go back. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm going back to Bible college. And I'm going to school. And the violent take it by force. I'm, I couldn't even. Man, when I got in the car, I was like, Oh, I was 155. I'm a big man. I'm, I'm about 220 right now. Man, I was 155. It was the great weight loss program. I don't recommend it. <laughs> the violent take it by force. They might told you you had cancer. 
They might told you you'll never marry again. They told, they might have told you that you, that you have this in, uncurable disease or your son or daughter is sick and they'll never recover and you better get used to it. Uh-uh, not me. I'm not used to unbelief. I'm not used to sickness. The violent take it by force and I command these things to go. And I believe you, God. Even though that I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil that your word comforts me. Your Holy Spirit points me back to the word of God. Amen. Dunamis power you have on the inside of you. And then I went back to Bible college. My wife, man, she beat me to the front door. I was walking like an old man, <coughs> spitting this stuff out. <coughs> I went into school and I sat down. Man, I, I could wear my clothes I had in high school. <laughs> Not a good weight losing program. And I constantly was bombarded by the word of God. And the word says, and the word says, you need to shut off the YouTubes. You need to shut them down for a season. If you are not, if something is going on, I'm saying you need to listen to the word of God and the violent take it by force. Amen. Some things, Smith Wigglesworth used to take it by force. They, I mean, this one lady, she had a big tumor in her stomach and he prayed for her and she fell down on the tumor and she goes, ah, and the whole crowd went, Oh, and this one man stood up and says, you brute, to Smith Wigglesworth, and he looked at him. He goes, I know my job. You sit down now. And he says, pick her up. I, 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 I tried this once. It worked, but I, it, Smith had a different way about him. I, these people must have been hardened heart. They had a hardened heart. And he said, pick her up again. And this big tumor on the inside. And and he says, go in Jesus' name. And she falls down again on the tumor. And she goes, oh, the crowd. And he goes, you're rotten, the man says. And he says, I told you to sit down. The violent take it by force. Somebody has to. Believe God. They pick her up again. <laughs> if I was a catcher, I would be waiting for something to be thrown. <laughs> um, so he did it again. And the tumor just fell right out. It was gone in the name of Jesus. Come on. The violent take it by force. You have to come against the words of unbelief. What the doctors say. You have to come against what the accountant says. You got to call those things in that are not as though they were because you are an ambassador for Christ. Whatever you ask, you will receive. It says in Mark eleven twenty three twenty four, 24, the violent take it by force. Hey Amen. You're going to be forceful in the word today. You're going to say to unbelief, you you get out of here. You're going to hear it like a, a dog that was kicked in the butt after, or, 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 or. You're going to hear that sickness run down the road. Amen. So the Bible says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. What are you going to do today? Sit in, in the puddle of piddle? Come on. You are people of God. Called by his name. Some of you were good fighters in the past. And the physical. Now it's time to fight the good fight of faith. And tell that unbelief. Hey, I believe you. And, and, and amen. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God beyond my sickness. Sometimes the righteous go through many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from them all. How? By listening and constantly bombarding your mind with the word of God and shutting everybody else off. All the unbelief, the ones that are not agreeing with you, the ones that are not speaking the truth, you can tell them, I'll call you later, much later. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, I'm busy right now. <laughs> I'll call you back soon. Because <laughs> you have an accomplishment to, to do. You need to accomplish the word of God on the inside of you. Some of you are keeping yourself uh, knowledgeable of evil. And you're not understanding that you need to keep yourself simple towards these things that are bombarding your mind. Keep yourself simple to it. Hey, I, I sometimes I get a little out of hand myself and I send you these things that are, are, are but you're supposed to speak against them. When I send you something about uh, what's happened with the children, don't get upset about it. Take the word of God. I'm looking for people to speak the word of God against this. Man, they can't even, I'm telling you, there's no way to stop a faith-believing person believing in the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, but so does unbelief. So faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. Put it on before you go to bed. Put it on during work. Put it on during the break. Think about it. Ponder on it. Take this scripture in Matthew eleven twelve. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent and the violent take it by force. I called up. Jesus said to me, I went through the processes in, in my first year. And I saw miracles. I was seeing miracles before that. I was seeing lots of miracles, financial miracles, corporations coming from a trunk of, trunk of a car, brand new houses and pools. My kids never went without. Amen. Because the... Finances chase me. I attract. I attract what's least in the kingdom of God. I don't. I don't have to think and worry. I. I. It says in Matthew six thirty three. I am seeking the kingdom of God. I know that I am righteous. So all these other things come on me. Read Matthew six thirty three. It says first seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things. Right standing with a king of kings that have all the supernatural things that can happen around you. Seeking him first. Yes. Flooding your mind with good things. The word of God. Excellence. With power that you already have on the inside of you. The only thing that stops it is what's between our two years. The violent take it by force. Amen. So the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent. Take it by force. This violent resolves is the precise ingredient missing in most and many people's lives. You need to add this ingredient against the battles that you are right now. Now let me get violent. Okay? Will you agree with me in prayer? Because I'm going to get violent on certain things. It has to go. There you go. Some of you are receiving right now because you are renewed in the word of God. You've been hearing orders from heaven. Amen. So I speak to sickness in children. All those foul reports that you heard, you need to cast them down. They might be true, but they're not going to reinforce their truth. The word of God says if I speak, I will have. And if I, if I speak, it will be given to me. Amen. So I speak against what the doctors say, and I believe what the Word of God says. My son and daughter are healed in the name of Jesus. The Word of God says so, and I believe it, and the phone will ring and people will call. No, the Word of God says. Oh, he's at it again. Yes, I am. Hey, I'm benefiting from it. <laughs> Come on. Woo! Turn off the bad news. Keep yourself simple to what is evil. Turn on the good news and listen to the word of God. I command cancer to leave. I say right now, I curse you autism. Right now in the name of Jesus, you go. I believe that more than what everyone else is posting. Don't listen to them. Listen to the word of God. I thank you, Father, for every infirmity and disease leaves now in the name of Jesus. I believe that. I see it all the time. I'm too far gone. I've seen too much what Jesus does. Hey, man, he was never violent, was he? 
I think with the money changers, the ones that were robbing people of their, what? Of their offerings? Man. Woo! Jesus was very, very aggressive on people getting healed. He said to the scribes, should I tell, should I tell him that his sins are forgiven? And he told the people, or should I tell him that, take up your mat and walk? Which one would you want? Well, you can have them both. So take your mat and walk. Amen. God is for you. Who can be against you? Right now, you, if you have the gift of tongues, you need to speak in the gift of tongues. I do that all the time. Why? Because it makes my stinking thinking, my mind, unfruitful. And the word of God comes in revelation. That means I start understanding things. In the spirit realm, it's more real than what you see. That's where you came from. You were a thought, and then the bedroom with the wife, and then you were planted with a seed, a sperma. It's the same way, planting the word of God in your heart. It's the sperma word. It's the seed that you need to plant deep in good soil with praise and thanksgiving. And turn off what is evil. And think on what is excellent, praiseworthy. And you need to do that. Amen? Amen. Think on things that are not as though they were. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Violence. And the violence, the violent takes it by force. Amen. Amen. You have a wonderful day. There's all kinds of stuff in back of New Identity Ministries. There is a, um, a precious man of God that was with T.L. Osborne. This man has seen millions of miracles. He said, Ron, I want you to put this book and take this book and sell it and give it to the ministry. And I was like, wow. Thank you, Jesus. But me, make sure if you grab this book in the back of the uh, New Identity Ministries, throw a little offering in there. We, we want you to work on faith. We want you to sow into good ground where you're getting fed. Remember, where you're led and where you're fed is where you give. If you're not being fed where you're led, where you, don't give. But if you're getting fed, Make sure you sow a seed in that ground because what you're saying is, I believe. Finances is very powerful, but it's least in the kingdom of heaven. But Brother Mike, Brother Mike, man of God, loves the word, put his life all out there against all odds. You got to read it. Top evangelist, I would say he was one of the top of just below Reinhard Bunke. If not, he'll get there. I know he will. He's looking for 100 million people to get saved in his lifetime. I think he's up to 21 million. <laughs> Grab the book. It's in the back. It's filled with wisdom. Amen. I'm looking for an editor too. Someone that would be able to edit. Also, if you can give your time and, and editing, let me know if you're an editor. Amen. You could sow into the kingdom of God and receive great things. Amen. So go pick up your books. The Holy Spirit Pit Benefits Package was brought to you by the Holy Spirit. That's who wrote this book. And there's five pamphlets sewed into this book, which you can download the pamphlets. They're also in your do. Amen. Thank you so much for hearing Jesus. I do this because the Lord has told me to go into all the earth. This week... This weekend, we have baptisms in the ocean we're going to be doing. And um, we're going to see people get revived from death into life. We're going to see this baptism on Sunday morning, sunrise at the beach. And then Saturday, we're going to be on a very busy uh, residential area uh, close to the ocean down near Port St. Lucie. 
If you're down around and you want to participate to come down to see the miraculous working power of God, I don't know who's getting saved down there, but I know there's many people that are going to have seeds sown, people saved, healed, set free, and delivered. You can also come with us on Saturday morning throughout the day. We'll be there. It's called a pop-up praise. Just pop it a tent up, put music out in the neighborhood there. It's a tough neighborhood. And uh, and uh, that's where you need to go. You need to go, right? I love going. I go into wherever he tells me to go. <laughs> Amen. Make sure you listen to this from the beginning because the violent, the violent take it by force. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Listen to this. Share it with people. It'll do them good. Amen.